Um, welcome to the latest edition of Tutor Talk. Today we're going to be talking about using Word for the early subject exams. So um, today we're going to be concentrating on the CM and the CS subjects. Um, and I'm joined today by my colleague Joe. Joe, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so I'm Joe. I've been at ACTED for four and a half years now, I think, um, teaching CM1 and CM2 obviously is very relevant to this um, but SP5 as well for the later exams. Okay excellent stuff so Joe, today um, first of all let's do a bit of introduction so how are students expected to complete the exams for these kind of early mathematical subjects? Yeah so paper A across all the subjects is going to be completed in Word um, and paper B in Excel for CM1 and CM2 um, and R for the CSs, so CS1 and CS2. Um, so there'll be lots of maths to be writing out in paper A, um, and obviously that's our focus for today. Fantastic. OK, so let's start with sort of any general considerations for those, um, for using Word for those subjects? Yeah, so I think it's likely that the majority of students are probably taking their first or the majority of students that are taking their first um, IFOA exams will not have previously practiced entering mathematical equations like this into Word. Um, so for most students, it can feel a little bit alien and completing questions can take a little bit longer than it would with pen and paper. Um, so the best way to practice um, or prepare for this is with practice. And so it's important students start using maths early. Um, and practice in Word sort of as early as possible in the sitting. Uh, those students that do start early and generally persevere throughout the sitting, I find that they're pretty efficient um, by the time they get to exam day, uh, gives themselves the best chance to complete the exams on time. Um, and then for students submitting assignments for marking, it's also a good idea to type out your answers in Word. Um, as well as providing useful practice, it gives a chance for markers to give you specific feedback um, on how it looks and how efficient your solution is. Um, and also for students, if they're attending tutorials, uh, generally a good idea to bring your laptop quite early on, maybe even for the for the first day, um, so that you can complete questions that we uh, we typically do in tutorials um, on Word. Um, and again, it just builds the efficiency um, throughout the sitting. So what options are there for entering equations in Word then? And have we got any, are there any pros and cons of them? Yeah, so the, the two main um, options that I consider are either just to use your keyboard, OK, exclusively um, and the keystrokes of your keyboard, or you can use uh, the inbuilt equation editor um, that Word has. Um, using your keyboard is likely to be quicker um, you'll probably be able to get started on that um, more quickly, um, but it can lead to equations that look a little bit messy. They can be quite hard for, for students to read. Um, and again, that takes some, some getting used to. Um, that said, the IFOA have produced some suggested keyboard notation um, in their examination handbook, um, but students don't have to use that. They can use their own um, notation if they wish. The key is that the examiners can understand what it is that, that you're doing and uh, uh, you demonstrate your approach uh, appropriately. Equation Editor produces something that's uh, much neater and probably in a more familiar style to what students uh, would see in the course notes. It looks a little bit more like latex, but not quite. Um, but it's likely it's going to take you some time to get efficient at writing things out in that way. Um, speed with Equation Editor can be helped by keyboard shortcuts. So there's some good keyboard shortcuts available for typing things out like Greek letters and those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, getting up to scratch with that can really help. Um, got an example here of a CM1 formula um, written out in both ways. So using your keyboard and using Equation Editor. Um, so you can see the difference between those two and, and how they look. So this sounds like there's pros and cons of uh, the different approaches then. How can a student decide which approach to take? Best thing to do is obviously to try both of them um, and see what works uh, for you. And also it's possible that it'd be a combination of the two that works best. Um, I generally find that some questions can be typed out quite quickly using a keyboard. Um, 
especially if it's a simple question, it's got lots of numerical values. Um, but then if you've got something a bit more complex, like an integral, um, you might want to use equation editor um, because this displays those expressions in a more familiar style. Generally, it's going to be easier to read um, and that just helps them working through through later parts of a question. Um, again, it's a case of starting early. You know, the earlier you can start practicing these and getting used to them, um, then uh, you'll be able to work out which one is best. Um, but it is a case of doing that practice so that you know come exam day exactly how um, you're going to be typing typing them out um, and then should be efficient enough at, at completing the exam on time. So when we're typing the equations out then, are there any rules that we have to follow? I know we've mentioned kind of the IFOA's um, guidelines on how they can be presented, but are there any kind of rules that we should be considering additionally? Um, not too many rules sort of generally, but um, it's a good idea to keep up to date with the assessment regulations. Um, they they change a little bit from sitting to sitting, so just be careful about any wording changes that might uh, prevent you from um, writing out your maths in a certain way or might give you some other ideas um, for how you're going to write your maths out. Um, and as you mentioned, the examination handbook, which is where the IFOA uh, notation sits, um, also worth being aware of that and having a look at their section on uh, mathematical symbols and formulae. Um, that's probably the section you'd expect to be updated with anything kind of relevant to this topic. So um, yeah, just, just making sure yourself aware of those um, when the, the, the version is uh, sent out just prior to the, the exams. I'm sure if you're doing tutorials as well, the tutors would make you aware of anything that we're aware of changing from sitting to sitting. Sometimes it happens a bit late in the day, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll do our best. Um, we've mentioned this need to be efficient and practice. Um, are there any other tips for improving sort of efficiency in the exam? Yeah, so there's two conflicting objectives I would say um, in the exam and they uh, they are genuinely conflicting it's quite hard to kind of work out which way to go so um, you want to make sure that you're answering questions quickly and of course you want to get to the correct answer um, but you also need to show enough detail to demonstrate your thinking um, the process you followed and any working um, that's going to enable you to get method marks. If you don't get the right answer, it does give you a chance of scoring at least some of the marks. Um, the emphasis when you're writing out the, the maths in Word is, is really just to convey your approach. So any expressions you put down don't need to be mathematically perfect. Um, so for example, if your solution ought to contain the Greek letters alpha and beta, uh, you could just write these out in words or simply replace with A and B. You know that might help speed things up as long as the examiners can understand what you're trying to do um, they'll be able to allocate you some method marks uh, as i say even if the final numerical answer ends up being incorrect in recent exam reports the examiners have commented students are not showing enough working to earn method marks um, which of course hurts the students chances of passing the exam um, but obviously students don't want to be typing out every single line of working um, because some of these lines, which are going to take up precious exam time to write out, uh, are not going to earn a student any credit. Um, so it's a good idea for students when they're practicing past papers um, to pay careful attention uh, to the detail the examiners have shown in their solution and to which lines of working they've allocated the marks. Um, and an understanding of the amount of detail the examiners require should help students produce concise um, but hopefully full scoring answers. Um, another thing students often um, kind of forget is that they're able to copy and paste from one line to the next. Um, so you don't need to be writing everything up from scratch, every single line that you put down in the in the exam. Um, and at least at the moment, students can copy and paste the IFOA standard keyboard notation um, from the examination handbook um, into their script. Um, even so, it may be worth having your own notation sheet on your desk, which you can refer to, um, and then you're not having to think every time you write something out exactly how you do it. You've got something that you can rely on that's very accessible. Um, it's worth saying that some exams contain multiple choice. Um, students should just provide the answer there. 
and shouldn't show any working. That working is not going to be marked, so it's just going to take up precious exam time. Okay, they are excellent tips. I particularly like the one about copy and pasting within your document. That feels like such a quick win for maths where you're changing a relatively small thing for each step. And yeah, we should just make use of those efficiencies. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, hopefully everyone found that advice really, really useful for those early subjects. Good luck as you're preparing for your exams. Um, we'll pop some links to the relevant pages on the IFOA website, but also our internal ACTED website as well for a bit more advice on those uh, subjects where you can find what other support is available. But thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.